nice day that we have out here. And so today, what we're gonna do is process this cubic yard of virgin ground material through my wash flat. Now, if you're wondering why I have this sitting in, a, in the square box, this is one cubic yard. So I suggest going to my previous video about how many five gallon buckets actually fit into a cubic yard. It's kind of a fun video to watch and you see how what we did here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it through this wash plant and see how much gold we actually get. But before we do that, what I wanna do is come over here to the wash plant and show you some of the upgrades that I've done to the shaker deck. Now I did have a video posted many months ago regarding the new shaker deck and how I kind of got started. Well, I've made a few little modifications to it to make it operate a lot better. So come on over here, we'll check it out. One of the modifications is this splash guard. I noticed that as the sprayers were spraying down here onto the punch plate, the water was really dancing around and some of the water was actually flowing out off the, uh, out off the uh, tailings pile. So what I did is I put this splash guard up here so that way it kind of keeps most of the water here inside the shaker deck. And of course the rocks can actually flow underneath it through these little pieces of vinyl here. Perhaps the most important modification that I've made is this, uh, is the vibrator. If you remember, the old vibrator had a couple of bearings here, a motor that turned at 2,000 RPMs. It had a shaft with a counterweight on it that swung around. Well, I replaced that with this vibrator motor. It's a, uh, it's much more compact. It turns at 7,000 RPM at full power. It runs about 5 amps at 12 volt. It's actually a concrete vibrator and it can actually lift 200 uh, pounds of concrete. Well, obviously this is way overkill for this type of machine here, but then again, I like overkill. So with that at, five, at 7,000 RPMs, if you put rocks on to the shaker deck, it would literally sling them right off. So it was no good. So I had to make one little extra modification to that so we can make this thing work. At 7,000 RPM, this uh, vibrator is way too violent for this uh, shaker deck. So I have to slow it down. So I have a 10 amp speed controller back here so I can actually adjust the uh, speed of the motor so it doesn't shake so much but just adequately gets the rocks to dance around. So I turn this switch on and as I spin this or turn this dial, you can hear it starting to shake, getting louder. Okay. And I found that actually running it all the way up here about half speed, about 3,500 RPM is the best. And I'll show you that here in a second. Now, some of you are wondering probably what this other speed controller is all about. Well, that's something that's coming up in the future. And so you're going to have to watch my videos coming up because I will show you what this guy is going to be hooked to. And this is going to be really revolutionary in the type of, uh, you know, sluice recirculating system. It's going to be really fantastic. I've just about got it finished, working out some of the bugs in the detail, and that'll be coming up. So be sure to catch my other videos coming out in the future on this one. All right. So let's go ahead and I'll show you the shaker deck in action. Okay, we'll go ahead and turn this thing on, show you how it works. Switch on, and I'll just turn it up just a little bit. And you can see just a very low RPM, how this thing is really causing this thing to, to vibrate and shake around. So the sweet spot is right about here at 3,500 on the We're getting a lot of high frequency vibration. This thing is, you can barely hang on to this thing. It's really bouncing. When those rocks get on here, they're just going crazy. Now let me show you 7,000 RPM. This is why. That's like crazy. Woo! All right, let's get this thing fired up. Let's get some material in here. And let's get going. Now, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to Mike the Greek because he told me a story in my last video that kind of goes like this. If, he was told this story. If you have a cubic yard of material and take a sugar packet and sprinkle it on the dirt, this is the amount of gold that you'll get out of this cubic yard. Well, let's see if Mike and the storyteller is correct. Let's hope we get at least a pack of sugar's worth of gold out of this cubic yard. So let's get this thing going through the wash plant. It's a hungry machine.
Look how clean these rocks are coming out. Nice and whistle clean. That's perfect. That's just what you want here. Cleaning out that uh, box. It's getting kind of late in the day. The shadows are getting long. Almost time to close it up. Okay, last load going in. Here we are. Boy, this was real gooey stuff. Real gooey clay. Took a little bit longer than expected to run. Took about two and a half, well, almost three hours. Plus, I also had company come by and chat with me as well. So that took a little time out of it. But here we are, we're running the last load here. It's getting late in the day, the shadows are getting low. They're getting long. But we'll shut it down and clean out the sluice and then see what we get. Okay, we'll unhook the dewatering trommel and get this out of the way. Then we got our little chute here. That feeds from the sluice into the dewatering trommel. We'll go ahead and detach that. Get that out of there. Go ahead and slide our bucket under here so we can catch anything that comes off the sluice. And I'll unhook the rails here as well. Got little rails that kind of help hold the matting in place. That way it doesn't warp or curl or anything like that. Gotta clean them off here. All right, now we'll just go ahead and roll this mat up. Now for those of you who want to know what kind of mat I use, if you go to my 2018 uh, video that says latest upgrades for my wash plant, I talk about this particular mat and uh, the type of mat it is. It's a, a, it's a double V or it's a double stack V matting that's made by Snake River Products. And I show more details about it in that video. So if you want to go to that video from 2018, it has more information about that, okay? All right, we'll take this out, dunk that in the bucket. All right. Okay, all we need is a cup of water and a bowl. Slash it up there, get all this loose sediment, pieces of gold that might be hiding in there. Yeah. I could also bring the sluice out if I wanted to. But this works just as easy. Okay, so now we got the, the mat in here. So go ahead and shake it out. And I always like to turn the mat so the riffles are pointing to the outside because you can see, see all the rocks that are trapped in here? Well, you take it to the outside, it kind of opens up everything a little bit, gets everything out, especially if you got any nuggets hiding in there too. So just shake it really violently. And like Jeff Williams says, yeah, you're gonna get wet. Okay, there's our mat. All right, we'll go ahead and take this up, process it out. It got too dark last night, so I didn't want to pan out the gold. So it's the next day. It's pretty windy out here, but I thought we'd be able to pan it with, uh, with the sunshine. So before we get to the gold, I just wanted to also point out that what we want to do here is we want to rake out all of our tailing pile here and spread it all out and then scan it with a metal detector because you never know if there's any nuggets 
that are larger than 3 8 that have might have fallen onto the pile, well, the metal detector will pick it up. So we're going to go ahead and spread all this stuff out, scan it around, and see if there's any nuggets in here. Before we get to panning our gold, what I like to do is take the concentrates, which is in this bucket here, or this tub, and kind of smear it around, and I like to hit it with the spin it off. Those of you who don't know about this, go to spin it off, and you can find out more about this. This is a magnet that rotates around and picks up all the heavy, you know, magnetite type black sand. What I like about this is that you can literally suck up all the black sand that's in here that are that's magnetic and dump it out into the pan here. So it actually saves a lot in your panning strategy and time. And I've just got a hit hooked up to a simple, uh, you know, Harbor Freight $20, uh, you know, battery power drill to spin it. And this works much better than your typical plunger type magnet because it doesn't really trap the gold. In fact, I've done this several times where I find just like maybe one little tiny piece of fly poop of gold. It's pretty amazing stuff. So, in fact, let me show you how it kind of works here. Let me scoop up some more. That will stir it up a little bit. And I'll hold it up to the camera so you can kind of see, see how the black sand bounces around there. That's kind of what's going on. And so it allows the black sand to dance around this, but it drops the gold. The gold can't hang on to it. So that's how what happens. So I also like to put it in a pan, and then we'll pan it out a little later just to make sure there's nothing hiding in there. This is the black sand from that spin it off, just to show you folks how well it works. So I'm just gonna just pan this real quick, get all this heavy black sand off of here. And just do it real quick here. Not really seeing anything at all. and pan this around. Not seeing anything, no, no pieces of gold at all. That just shows you how well this thing works. Okay, now I'm seeing, uh, yeah, one, one little itty bitty speck here. I don't know if you can appreciate that or not. Just a tiny little speck. So one little speck that's probably at least a hundred mesh size. Yeah, that's the only one that's showing up, so not too bad. Okay, so I like to use a Maverick pan when I'm panning my concentrates, and I apologize for the wind. It's blowing out here probably about close to 25 mile an hour. It's really blowing hard today. So I'm going to go ahead and take these uh, cons here, and we'll put them in the pan, pan it out, and see how much we get here, okay? So we'll go ahead and dump that in. Sorry about that, swinging around so you can see it. We're going to head dump those in there. All right, and then we'll kind of splash it around, get everything out of the out of this bowl here. Okay, so now with a lot of your black sand out of here, it should be pretty easy to finish concentrating and collecting your gold. So we'll go ahead and just pan and tap at the same time. That gets the gold to trap right up here at the at the front of this pan. We'll go ahead and take off all of our blonde material. And you can see that already I'm hitting black sand. So we got a lot of black sand concentrates here. All right, now we're kind of getting down to too much black sand here. And I don't like to get this low. In fact, I'm actually already starting to see the gold popping up already. So we'll just kind of take it easy. We may, not be, we may have to split this pan in half so that way we get a full view of all the gold here. Let me just shake it around a little bit and then we'll pack it back down. All right, here we go. I'll turn around, sorry again for the wind, another big wind blast coming through right now. So we'll kind of cut the front part down here and get rid of some of the heavies off the bat here. There's nothing showing just yet. All right, now we'll start working on the rest of this. And we already got some gold showing up here in the corner. I'll bring this up to the camera. Hopefully you can see that. A little gold starting to show up in the corner. Oh yeah, there's some nice pieces already. You just kind of see them trailing off the black sand right here. You see that right there? That's showing up pretty good. Now let me finish cutting down. There's some more pieces that are flowing 
right down in here. So we're seeing more of that. Nice little pieces, probably 20 mesh size. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right, we got some more showing up right here. Not quite pickers, but they're definitely some nice pieces of gold in here. Yeah, you can see more gold starting to flow down this direction. Nice pieces, really nice pieces. As we start whittling our way down, in fact, let me see if I can, there we go, there's a, there's almost a picker, not quite, just showing up right there. Most of this is fine gold in that gooey clay, so it's amazing how much gold you can actually find in that stuff, but you can definitely, I'll bring this up so you can kind of pre, see if you can see this in the camera and fully appreciate all the gold that's sitting in there. Oh yeah. There's some more coming in right there. One that almost looks like a picker, not quite a picker size yet, but pretty good. All right, now I'm gonna clean the, scoop some of this back up here. And I'm just gonna clean off the bottom here because what's really important is how much fine stuff, and I know the camera may not show this, but I'm just gonna just gently clean up the bottom here a little bit. And I don't know how good the camera resolution is, but you can see the 100 mesh pieces that are down in here and even finer, just tiny little speckles throughout the whole pan here. All right, so now we're kind of coming to a close. Here's some more gold here showing. In fact, let me just take the water off a little bit. So now you can kind of see all the gold, real fine stuff. I don't think there's probably uh, a pack of sugars worth of gold, but maybe enough gold to buy a pack of sugar. <laughs> so looks to me like, you know, even though this is a nice show for that uh, cubic yard, uh, I, I just guessing here we're probably less than a, uh, uh, we'll have to weigh it up, but I'm sure we're probably less than about a half a gram. So that's not really great for, uh, you know, if you're picking shoveling. I mean, if you're out hobby prospecting like I am, yeah, it's okay. You're having fun getting some gold and you can show it off. Now, if you're probably doing production, like uh, the folks up in, uh, you know, the Yukon and Alaska, and you're running material, you'd love this. You'd be drooling over all this, getting a pan full out of a cubic yard like that. So, yeah, it's just all a matter of perspective here. So, we got Mike the Greek, looks like we got some gold, but probably not quite enough to fill that bag of sugar. All right, that's it, folks. Well, I hope you liked this video. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so that way you can get future updates on my videos. Also, at the end of this video, I've got some links to some of my other previous ones, so be sure to click on those as well. In the meantime, I wish you, again, the very best in your prospecting adventures. Get out there and find some gold, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.